Hello, Ms. Williams? Yeah, uh huh. All right, we all be news is proud to have on Miss Dorothy Williams, Sister Dorothy Williams, this is the daughter of the late great Isadora Duncan. Right, I mean, Isadora Banks. Banks. I'm sorry, I feel what the hit. Isadora uh-huh. Banks, who was uh, moderate in Arkansas uh, close to 50 some years ago, before mm-hmm. Emmett Till, before the uh, Montgomery bus boycott, he was a model for civil rights in mm-hmm. the state of Arkansas. How are you doing today, ma'am? I'm doing fine. How are you today? I'm fine. I can't complain. I just want to talk to you. I had a chance to meet you over a month ago at the Masonic Rites for your uh, your late father at yes, his grave site, and I thought it was a long time coming. It was a very emotional day. And I just yes. want to uh, talk to you about, man, what type of man was your father, Isidore Banks? Oh, my father was a good man. He always, he, his, I, for me, for I'm sure his downfall was he always tried to help people. Mm-hmm. He loved helping people or sending kids to school. My father was a very, very important man to me. Uh, you know, he 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 just loved to help people. He he was a good person, very good person. Oh, he had his own little ups and downs when it comes to uh, to his uh, workers. You know, but sometimes you have to be kind of kind of strict sometimes with your workers, otherwise they'll run over you. I definitely agree with that. Also, he was like one of the wealthiest uh, black men in the county, Crittenden County, at the time, correct? Yes, he was one of the wealthiest black men of the county, of the South period. Mm. So this also made him a target, so to speak, I mean, because of his wealth. I mean, how, how much land did he own? He was a, t- a target. Oh, it was so much, uh, you know, I, couldn't, I, can't, I can't really describe it, but I know it's 99000 uh, money, m- money that was in the bank that they'd taken out of there. But it was so much land, uh, we haven't really uh, confiscated for what it, might, what, what it might have been. It's, it's a lot of land that's uh, belonged to my father. And uh, like I said, I can't uh, even tell you the amount of the yards of money, of uh, the acres of land that he might have had. But we are working on that now to find out just how much land it was. But it was quite a bit, enough, enough. That's the reason why they killed him, because he had too much land. He would not sell his land, especially the house that he had in the in the, in the city of uh, Marin, Arkansas. It was a big old house there that he had that he paid off his workers there. And uh, they wanted to buy that land, but my daddy would not sell that land. And they – should I keep on going because I yes, have something? Yes, ma'am. You fine? Because uh, I, I I was small at the time, but I did know it was something going on wrong. I could not uh, discover it because my, my my little brain and my little mind didn't know. But they was killing up all of our cows and all our little dogs that we played with. We used to play on the railroad tracks, but we would see all our little dogs on the railroad tracks dead. And even the pet pig that we had to play with, we found him dead. It was so much that they did to my family that it still hurts to to talk about. But they they killed my daddy. Mm-hmm. And they killed him because he was they killed him because he was too wealthy. They tried to say he had girlfriends, but I don't know if he had girlfriends or not. I don't care. That's no reason to kill my father. Right. But they killed him because he was he was just too wealthy for to be a mixed black man in the South. Mm-hmm. Move, move, Queen, move. I know you mentioned that uh, it, it said because the girlfriend he was a very handsome guy. He was a, yeah. A my man. father was very, <laughs> very handsome. That's why all the girls that's why all the girls flocked to him. And I guess he was kind of weak to rejection of them. Right. You know. I can't really take up for him because he was he was the latest man. He was married, but he also was the latest man and didn't mind helping nobody. Honestly, yeah, definitely, like you said, he was a great uh, philanthropist. He was wealthy. He was very generous with his wealth. Uh-huh. I heard that uh, he set up a cotton gin to make sure that the black workers got what they, you know, uh, yes, he, yes, got he did all that. For. Yes, he did all that. He, even, uh, uh, he didn't make electricity, but he brought electricity through Marion, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. So he was a hero. He was a real pillar of the community. He really was like a hero that the white folks did not want to have down there because he was taking over them that they, that they thought because he was so well recognized as a person. They, over, they put him above the white people 
and they mm. didn't like that because he had so much wealth and land. They ain't going to let you stay down. They wouldn't let you stay down in that year of 54 when you got all that. They ain't going to let you do that. They had to take it from you in some kind of way, if they, even if they had to kill you. And that's what they did to my daddy. Although I know it's supposed to have been three black men, it's supposed to have been the one that's supposed to have got him set up, true mm. enough, but they still killed him. And the man that's supposed to kill him was supposed to have been the man they called Sherman. He was supposed to have been the head of the Ku Klux Klansman at the time. He was the judge. He was the judge of the, of, the, of the town down there, but he also was the head of the Ku Klux Klan. So he died. He had died from he died from cancer, but he the one who gave the people to go ahead to kill my daddy, the Ku Klux Klansman. So you said I don't, the know, I don't know what his complete name, but the name was Sherman. Okay, he was he was a judge. He was a judge of Marin, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. They even tore all the pictures out. They even tore all the pages, all the pages out of the book, out of the record books, to to let people know what his land was, so in case the family came back to try to uh, confiscate for his land, they wouldn't have no records of it. Now, it was amazing to me that um, now when people point out some of his land, now they got like uh, $400,000 homes on top of this land that he used to own, but he never sold it to anybody. So it's really still the family land, but the it's family... still the family land. They got hotels down there on top of his land. Mm. Some of the land I seen when I was just down there recently. Right. They got hotels and stuff on his lands, apartment buildings uh, on his land. It's a lot of stuff that's on his. Daddy had a lot of land, I'm telling you. He had a lot of land. I mean, I mean a lot of land. Mm-hmm. He had enough land to put his plan to put to put, it, to put the uh, the cotton pickers to, to work. Mm. He had cotton pickers of his own. That's what they didn't like. He had uh, he had his own cotton pickers. He didn't have to really go to them to, uh, too much for nothing. That's what they didn't like because he could get his own. Now, that's amazing. Like you said it was three blacks that lured him to his death, right? He it was like three, three black men lured him to his death. They, 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 he, he, daddy had always kept a pistol somewhere in that old truck of hills. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, they discovered and, and told the white man about the about the pistol before. That's that was right before they started beating him and 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 and, and killed him. They had to get the pistol from him because his daddy was a big man. Daddy was tall and he's big, and mm-hmm. he didn't take no stuff off of nobody. You know, mm-hmm. if you hit him back, he gonna hit you back. He didn't care what color you was. You know, but he always kept him a little, little, little protection there, and in, in that uh, somewhere in that glove compartment, somewhere in that truck. But them black men knew where it was. The white folks had him, they had him to go out and take it before they came in and and, and started killing him. And these were friends of his, right? He grew up with these guys. These were some of the best of his friends. He was supposed to be some of his best friends. You remember their names, or you know their names? My, my, my daughter knew them because I think I know one of them was supposed to be in the, uh, in the in the Masons too. He was in that. Okay. Uh, in the Mason group too, with Daddy. My like, daughter know more about that, huh? Yeah, I heard some. Uh, I was hearing some. They said uh, I talked to your daughter at one point that he might have been alive for several days, and they was torturing him. And they were still torturing him. They tortured him all day, all night, all day, and all night until they got rid of him. It was a man that's supposed to have been hurt, but he didn't. He was too afraid to call anybody because it wasn't nobody to call because the law itself was the one that was doing it. Hmm. And what does the, yeah. Get out of there, girl. Huh? And, what, and what do the uh, I know uh, we talked about a lot of Italians moved into the area back then as well. Uh-huh. Did the Italians have anything to do with uh, the death of your father? Some of the Italian immigrants. Well, see, we're not we were not for sure, but it was an Italian woman that mm-hmm. is the that my daddy was dealing with, and uh, the statements that she made might have made it bad for him too because she told him, "Can't nobody use my land over here." But Isidore Banks, because uh, they was using land for different things down there, and if mm-hmm. Hills wasn't, if Hills wasn't uh, up to part of what they wanted to do, with he he could use her land, and other white folks wanted to use that land, but she told him that uh, you all cannot use my land. Only my only Isidore Banks can use my land. And see, I think they thought that he was messing around with the woman, just because she made that statement. But my dad was just good to to people. That's all. Now, I can't say what he wasn't doing, but that's what the white folks think. They think that he was messing around with the Italian woman. And uh, that, that was kind of bad as well. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's like, to him, it's like it came along with the territory, it seemed like this guy, very charismatic guy, very handsome guy, very lodged in life figure with a lot of resources. He would well, be attracted to a lot of women. He was, he was, he was, it was a lot of women up in his face. 
I say mm-hmm. during that time, during that time, uh, men and women didn't look didn't have no morals. They just had something to do with each other. It was, it's, right. I mean, doing Arkansas all the time. I mean, one had one had one old lady, one had the other old lady, or one had the other wife, or what? It was down there during that time where the white folks had the white folks the one started that kind of mess any damn way, you know, going with each other's women's and men's and all that kind of stuff. Well, the right. black folks picked it up too, and they were doing the same thing, you know, just having having women's, having men. My daddy was a, like I said, my daddy was a very important person. He was a very nice looking man, handsome man, tall, stood tall. I mean, he might have had a little weight on him, you know, but he was, but he was carrying his weight. Sorry, right, that so you know how to carry, huh? He was built for comfort, not for speed. Yeah. <laughs> he was a World <laughs> War One veteran too, right? He was a World War One veteran. Yeah, he was so a World War veteran. That's himself. how he got the money that he had to start what he had when he came out of the uh, army. He had quite a bit of money. I mean, during that time, like four or five thousand dollars was a lot of money. Exactly. You know? And uh, when he came out, he he came out and put his money to some use. And that's how he got started on that. And the white folks just didn't like that because when he came in, he came in with money. He didn't have to ask the white folks for nothing because he had his own. Or if he didn't have it, he could get it because he had the money to do it with. Also, did he lend a, lend a lot of money off the people to help them as well? He lent a lot of money. It's right now today. I was just down there. The, not the time I seen you, but the time right before the end. I had lived. I went to you all's uh, comfort, a uh, company in, mm-hmm. and and just uh, behold. Uh, we was telling the lady about who who I was, and she was telling me then. She said, "Oh, ma'am," she said, "You come on in." Matter of fact, she even gave me a a nice. Well, I don't want that to be done because she said because uh, they might get in trouble. But she gave me a nice discount mm-hmm. uh, where I was at, you know. And she said, said uh, uh, told, "Told us not to stop doing what we're doing." And when she got back home, and she's gonna tell her mother, and they was gonna come over and come to the um the 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 um. Uh, celebration that we had the first time I came down there. But she said out of her own mouth, she said, ma'am, I don't know if you know the name, Ms. Ms. Banks. She called me Ms. Banks, but her name is William. She mm-hmm. said, it's people, down, it's people down here right today. And she said, I mean, a lot of them. Oh, your daddy. And she said, because when they said they go into the bank, that's what it was going to, is the door <laughs> banks, not right. to a regular bank. Right. You know, and, and they, uh, oh, I don't know. That's, my dad was good. My dad was good. You know, it just might, might, might be a little hoarse, but he he was good. He sounded like great, man. I, I didn't want to ask you, too, did he sense that something was on the horizon with him, like danger was around the corner? I believe he did because he sent me and my mom and my, and my other kids, uh, siblings up here. I, you know, I was I was standing uh, on the back porch, and they was, they was um, cutting beans with, with, with the beans machine. Mm-hmm. And I was standing on the porch, and I was listening to uh, the grown folks saying, yeah, but watch out, there they come, there they come, there they come. Well, by me being so small, I didn't know exactly what they was talking about. You know, they, they was, it was uh, coming down the dirt road, you know. Mm-hmm. But they came down that way, and they stopped up at our place. It was some white folks, and then they kept going. But I know not too long after that, let's see, I can't really tell you how long, but I, I assume it was about a month, according to what my mama was saying, they put us in the long trailer and all our furniture and brought us up here. And all the time we was in that trailer, we could not be seen, mm-hmm. especially me. And this is, get out of here, little girl, get out of here. Get the hell out of here. We, we, you know, and and uh, when, we, when we got halfway, I guess, so far up the road, they did let us uh, get out. And used the bathroom. Then we went back, and then we was covered up again, you know, until we got to my uncle's house. So I, yeah, I assumed Daddy knew what was going on, cause uh, not too long after that, they sent me a picture. I sent the Mama a picture, and they showed his body on a tree where they was burning him up. So you, oh, when we think about the picture when you saw it, I mean, could you recognize the, anything looking like your father? Oh, you, you can't tell. You couldn't tell what that he was on the on the. Oh no, you couldn't tell what that was on that uh, tree. Mm-hmm. No, it looked look like it might have been another piece of a log uh, uh-huh. hanging on to that tree. You know, because it was it, it was it was nothing there identifiable. Nothing. They burned him to a crisp because he was about six foot six. They burned him down to three foot three. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So they, it, you couldn't tell what that was on that tree. Did they tell you what, exactly all the things they done? You, I know that his body, of course, was set on fire, but uh, did they tell you like the details of what they did to your father? Well, you I know one thing. When they first got hold to him, they they called him in a. Uh, 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 you know, Daddy had a a bad heart, and they took his medicine. 
and they threw it after they after they was able to get him, you know, get him down. After them black folks had to set him up, and they had busted him in his head and everything, was beat him on the head and stuff. They uh, took his medicine and threw it away, and then they grabbed him and uh, tied him to a tree, and they cut his penis off, mm. and they put his penis in his mouth, and then they tied, tied, tied him to a tree with, 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 with some chains and burned him up. So he did all this while he was still alive. Uh huh. Why oh, wow. he still alive? And yes, the black folks actually participated. They tied him up, and they helped cut off his his private part. They helped. They you know. Now I don't know if they helped cut him. Cut, I don't know if they helped did that part, but they helped got him set up so they could do that. Because mm. see, they the one got the gun and stuff out the truck where where so that the white folks could come in and get my daddy. Because see, my daddy was gonna whoop their ass if they if if uh, if uh, they had uh, took that gun. My daddy would have whooped their ass. Mm-hmm. Because he don't, he like I said, he stood his own ground. You got to, you got to, you got to come get him, and you got to whoop him. Otherwise, he gonna fight you back. I don't care what color you was. Right. And I, and I think that I got that from my daddy, myself. Because I don't care what color you is, myself, and I don't care who you is. You just gotta beat me up. Because I'm, I'm, otherwise, I'm gonna get you too. And you know the place where he was killed in, where they took him to. I mean, uh, what's the name of the street or the place? Now that part I don't really know. Now my daughter might could tell you all that. Mm-hmm. No, I don't know, but because they had told me that they were going to show me this, the spot when I was down there, when they took my daddy, but I never got a chance to go there when I was down there. But daddy got a lot of land down there, that a lot of that a lot of hotels and motels and 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 uh 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 uh, 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 uh what they call apartments and stuff right. they're sitting on right today. So yeah, ain't nobody gave them permission to have that land. Nobody. Exactly. So I mean, that's like it's crazy. They're like this is, I mean, they just basically it was a a, a crime. Uh huh. Yeah. All that land is a crime scene, basically. I mean, with your father's death, not so this is like, it's part like like when the uh, I look at World War Two, when the Jewish folks lost all their artworks and jewelry and stuff. Right. And stuff. Right. It's something similar to that. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's ironic that what happened in America just like several years after that happened to the Jews. Right. Now, people look at it as being as such because y'all not getting a dime off the land or the people who built it. We're not getting anything. Then we're not getting anything, and don't know if what would happen if we try to. Uh, when we try to, well, we're doing it now. When we try to get our land back, we still don't know what might happen because, see, uh, those people are still there and they don't want to get that land up. I hope they don't, they don't kill us trying to get our land back. So we we, we still can be in war because mm-hmm. that kind of stuff goes on for years, for years, you know, because they, 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 whoever got that land is somebody belonged to them. And the I, I told somebody told me your father owned as much as 2,000 acres of land down there. See, it might have been that uh, or more. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know exactly how much. I thought it was more than it, but uh, two thousand dollars. I mean, two 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 thousand would uh, confiscate some of it. But I think we got more than that down there. Oh, that's a, that's amazing to me. But I just, I mean, like, it's like you should be able to look at the land deeds, the history of the, who owned the land, and I mean, like you know, they owe y'all some type of restitution or something. I mean, the state yes, they do. Or, or the yes, county should be paying y'all something. Somebody should give us something for. Uh, daddy, you know, because, see, they know that's not theirs, and they know how they got it. So, you know, ain't no system uh, a bull crapping around with it. They know how that came up uh, and how everybody got that land that they sitting on. That came from my daddy. They took from my daddy, and and, and and they had no rights to take it, but they did it. And they figured by the time, by like it is now, that everything is all right, it, uh, you know, that we ain't thinking about it. Yeah, we are. I have been thinking about it for years, but I was scared to say anything. I was scared to even know for anybody to know who I was. Because I was an heir to Isidore Banks, and I didn't know if they would try to hurt me or kill me still. Because, see, it was a reason why Daddy sent us up here. He didn't send us up for nothing. He knew they were going to kill me. And he sent us up here. Up to St. Louis. Up to St. Louis. Uh huh. Meet y'all in St. Louis? Well, he's huh? going to meet. I mean, was the plan was to meet y'all, or bring y'all back down when things cool down? No, he was getting point. us out of there. He was getting us out of there because he, uh, Daddy felt that something was going on wrong. Mm-hmm. No, Daddy didn't want to come back. That's why my other sister, Muriel, fled to California. But I heard she came back, and but she died. But mm-hmm. she fled to California. But she got ill, and uh, I think she came back to uh, she came back to Illinois. I think it was, and that's where she died at. Yeah, Daddy like, knew there was something going on wrong. What about the families of the black guys who participated in your father's murder? I mean, had they reached out to you all? Or had oh, they... nobody think about us. But they mm-hmm. tell me we got. They tell me we got somebody up here, up here in St. Louis named uh, and the dentist. It's supposed to be a, I was saying, Lena, Marshall Lincoln tell you more. It's supposed to be a dentist or someone named Gibson up here. Uh, his parents or people was behind some of that when daddy, when daddy got killed. But he's a dentist now. I guess he took his money and went on, went on to school and, and, uh, <laughs> and got right. to be a dentist, you know. Made himself wealthy. 
you know, but still nobody thought about me, his own daughter, Isadora Banks' daughter. Anybody thought about me at all? Nobody but my but my but my, but my, but my daughter. And she said herself, Mama, it's time for us to get what we're supposed to get. She said, you've been quiet all these years. And she's been noticing that I've been quiet all these years. And I would yeah. never let them know who I was, nobody. You know, I would stay to myself and keep my kids to myself. You mm-hmm. know, because I didn't know what was going on. And I didn't know were they still trying to hurt me or my children, you know, in order to keep what they had. Because there's a lot of money involved here. You know, right. there's a lot of money involved here. You know, and I know Italians, they don't want to give up, give, give up nothing, you know, FBI or whatever. They, they, they you know, it's, 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 this story is more bigger, sir, mm-hmm. than what you know. I don't know if you want to tackle it or not, but it's more bigger. This thing here is more bigger than what you, than what you're looking at. That's right. You know, but I'm sorry, like I said, I guess kind of. Oh, it's understandable, man. I want to ask you. How has it impacted you? And you feel like your family for you. I mean, how has this impacted your family and you? Huh? you, know, you, say you just now. How has this uh, tragedy impacted you and your family in terms of how, how you measure the impact of this tragedy of losing your father this way and losing the wealth? Well, I live. I live with the Lord, and uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's nothing that's real. Fast about my living, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm a Christian, but I ain't got no big this and big this. It have knocked us to our feet. I mean, it's, it kept us down a little bit, you know. Cause Daddy, I know Daddy's gonna help us out and mm-hmm. help me out, you know. But uh, it have knocked. It's knocked a lot of, a lot out of my life, for us financially. Although they don't give a damn, but uh, yes, it have knocked a lot, and I have struggled myself too. To make it, but God have put me where I can be able to take care of myself. But uh, you see, I live with God, and uh, I always hit said it. I put it in God's hand because I know I know He gonna help. He gonna see it through. So I just I was wondering, was it my daughter who he who he uh, got to help uh, to do this? Because my daughter's the type of person that likes to uh, do things and get things back that belong to her. Mm-hmm. And she could, like I said, she seen that I was uh, uh, still upset about it, but I never talked about it. And she just came to me and told me, Mom, we're going we gonna to get Daddy's stuff back. She said, I know you didn't want to talk about it. She said, I've been seeing it for, for a long time. She said, but you ain't got to worry about us now. She said, we all grown now. You ain't got to hide no more. Let's go see what we can do about Daddy and see, can we bring him back alive? Because he sent us up here to save us. Now it's time for us to do something for him. Oh, I'm tired. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I mean, it's like it's been a burden for you for years to carry this burden. It is. It's been yeah, a burden. I've been carrying this on my head ever since, I, ever since my daddy died. I just... Mm-hmm. I just didn't know nothing to do and what to do when I was scared to do something at the time. And I wasn't old enough to even make a move. And when I got old enough, I, I didn't know what to do. I just left it and put it in God's hands. But my daughter came. Put it, put it down. 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 But my daughter, sometimes I think God, used, God is using her for a tool to, because see, God uses you for a tool. Mm-hmm. Using for a tool, and sometimes I think that it might be what he's using her for to uh, for a tool, something to keep her busy, uh, cause she likes doing things. So this is cause she's trying to be a lawyer. But that's uh, how she be a hell of a lawyer. I mean, I just know your she got dogged determination. Yes, yeah, she do. And she's really good with trying to you know approaching people and stating the facts. Oh, she know how to be a spokesman. Mm-hmm. You know, she she she's she's really out there. And sometimes, like I say, I think God used her for the tool to uh to try to get on this case, you know, because she's seen how mama, how I was feeling, and I'll just keep things to myself. So she's just but, bringing on out because she said they grown, and uh, it's time to bring this out. Exactly, and I, I know we talk about Isidore Banks, I mean, his love of women, he had kids and uh, different families. Uh-huh. How does this affect the other, other parts of the family? Have you been, like, united in, like, trying to get this? Well, see, I, I really don't know the main, one of the ones that I do know is supposed to be been the, uh, uh, Jim Banks. Jim Banks, he's a. Uh, I don't know. I I I I I've only had a chance to talk with him a few seconds and take a picture. My daughter mainly is the one that's been dealing with James Banks. 
James Banks is more so just interested in where the money is. He ain't doing anything about nothing else. That's all. He he see he's a lawyer, he's mm-hmm. an attorney or something like that. He ran for office down there too, but failed. But I I I don't. He's a try to be above everybody, so I can't I can't really rely or you know uh, say too much about Jim because so uh, he thinking more than anybody's in the family. You know, so I can't really say uh, too much about Jim. Maybe I get a chance to talk with him more more often than what I have. I can see a better thing, but right now I don't think I can see is Jim just want to know where the money a damn would have to daddy. Hey, he's the oldest child of uh, Mr. Isidore Banks. He's your health brother. I think he's the old. Oh, oh, Jim was me, me and Jim. Me, me and Jim about the same age. It's about a year or two different between me and Jim. Okay. Uh huh. But being you said he was a he's a lawyer. I don't wonder why he didn't you know take it upon himself to initiate some of the things y'all. You know what? You said the same thing I've been saying. He's he's supposed to be an attorney. If he's an attorney, or if or if he was an attorney at the time. Mm-hmm. Why didn't he try to get into this? But my daughter said he said it was too soon and 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 fame was too hot and he was afraid to get involved. That's why he left Marion, Arkansas, and went to another part of uh, Arkansas. Okay. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's like you know, it's like this is like a, a blatant disregard for only um, for human life, and this was a, a crime of, of epic proportions because it affected. I mean, to me, how you build wealth is generational wealth. This was generational uh-huh. wealth. Your father, Isidore Banks, built for his family to enjoy for generations to build upon. This is going to be able to give y'all a great start out in life. And yes, for it that, was. Uh, like that, it's a, it's a, it was a great crime. I mean, it was like it's a crime scene. It is. With, you know, it should have tape around that whole area of Crittenden County. It should be taped up like a crime scene. It should, it, it should be like that, and I don't know why they don't have it like that, but like I said, the, the way them white folks were doing things down there, black folks were even scared to... Uh, to uh, 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 do anything like when, like when we got ready to uh, come down there to have the the, uh, the ceremony at the at the uh, his, his first ceremony mm-hmm. uh, it was supposed to be at Anthony's funeral home, but Anthony uh, funeral home after he thought about it he got up off of it he t- he told like a family that we could have it at his church and I mean at his funeral home and then we were gonna go out to the um, burial ground but he got up off of that and we just had to go straight to the burial ground. Him and Uncle Sam got into it about that. Now, I don't know what Uncle Sam did to him about that or what, but because, see, when you tell Uncle Sam something like that, you're supposed to uh, honor it. And, see, mm-hmm. Anthony didn't honor that. He made us go to the, the grave site without having any kind of ceremony at his uh, funeral home because he was still afraid. So you can see what I'm talking about. Right. Was there a funeral for your father when he died back then, or did they have any type of ceremony for Not him? Not that I know of. Mm. Not that I know of. Uh-uh. You know, who did that? Did, uh, did Anthony Funeral Home do the body? Did they t- did they take uh, charge of the body or who? Well, see, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. See, Anthony Funeral Home is the one I'm talking about as of as of, the, as of today. Right. See, they were supposed to give us a ceremony and they turned it down. They Ted said yes. He the man even told me to come on down. But then mm-hmm. when we got down. They said he had changed his mind. He was afraid of what might could happen to his place. So uh, we had to go to to the uh, gravesite by ourselves. Even now, I don't know who held it. Afraid, even in 2010, we got a black president and all this other stuff, supposedly. Uh-uh. But that's what I'm saying. Uh, the man was really, I think, was pretty afraid. I know he was because, see, like I said, he had told me to come on down, and they were going to have it there. Then all of a sudden he upped and changed, and once he found out how serious this case was, mm-hmm. and he upped and turned around and said, no, he wasn't going to have it there. Wow. Uh-huh. What about, yeah, I mean, did, did black people fight back? I mean, did your father, no. I mean, nobody fought back when your father got killed? I mean, no. He, if it's been they ran, mm. no, 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 they didn't fight back. Uh, uh-uh. uh, because like I say, it was it was black folks trying against black folks at the same time. Right. See, so everybody kind of kept their mouth shut up. And I know, I, I know that they had offered some of them black men something when they did it to daddy, you know. But the, the, nobody saying anything. But uh, I know they offered them something. Mm, that's something, man. Man, Judas is, man. I just don't understand how man do that much good for you. You came up with y'all were buddies and stuff, and them was he his did friends. much good for the community. Y'all sold them out for twenty pieces of silver. Them was his friends. Those mm. were supposed to be his friends. And like I said, he, one of them was uh, it's, a, it's on it was on the uh, Mason uh, thing with him. Did it, did the Masons bring that up? Did they know of this traitor among their myths? I mean, did they? Uh, well, see, my daughter Marceline found out all about that and brought it to them. Mm-hmm. And when they brought she but he brought it to them, uh, they said that they were gonna see what could be done about that, even if he's still alive. Mm-hmm. Some of them people that did that, they might have been like you know, like in their twenties or thirties, 
early right. 30s during that time. And see, they could still be alive today. Mm-hmm. And see, that's one reason why I was still kept keeping things to myself. I was afraid. Because they could still be alive. How many people do you think were involved? How many people were involved, they say, in the, in the actual murder of your see, father? I, I really don't know. Now, Marceline can tell you that, too. Now, Marceline, I can tell you that herself. Now, I, I really don't know, but they just said some people, some white men. That's all I knew was white men. Mm. Uh-huh. So, I mean, what do you want people to learn? I mean, what, what's so important that people should know about this case and about your father and about what you all doing? You know, can you tell us something that's very important you want the people to know? Concerning this uh, case, I, w- I want the people to know that I do want some restitution. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would like to know who killed him. Are they still alive? If so, I want some time done. I don't care how old they are. And I, I, do, I want, I want back what they took from us. I mean, I don't even know. I don't know how to explain it to you, but I know they owe me and my family something, and I want it back. And I do want the killer if he's still alive. Well, Dr. And Ms. Dr. Williams, it pre- it's an honor to be talking to you. I look forward to keeping in touch with you. Uh, we'll definitely do our part to uh, educate the public about what's going on with your father's case. And also, I mean, because we talk about the black farmers, everybody talking about, oh, no, give the money to black farmers, but black folks, this is the reason why we need reparations. Because uh-huh. we've been cheated. You know, we've been and cheated. You know, like this, you know, and let you know that, you know, we got a long way to go in terms of. Been, uh, ooh, you you talking right. Players. We got a long ways to go. Yeah. You, you know, I'm glad you said it because you got some black people today that said, oh, everything's all right. Them white folks are all right. We got a long ways to go. They keep talking about this and that. This, uh-uh. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. The ones, the ones that are talking, they're talking, they kind of talk. The ones got a thousand faces just like the white folks. Right. Because, see, we, we, we still ain't through. And they always talk, we free. We free with God. But we ain't free with these white folks. No, I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why people are afraid because they say, no. It's opened up a Pandora's box, though. Know, if we take care of the Isdor's Banks family, then we got to admit that America is built on a lie. It just is. <laughs> and then we got to do something about it. I mean, it's something about this thing where people know that, you know, they say we, we keep a person in prison that's in prison that's innocent for 30 plus years. Uh huh. And we let them out, but at the same time, we don't want to admit that we made a mistake. We made a mistake, right. And right. In this case, we made a, they made a, gr- a grievous error in terms of how they treated your family and how they did your father. And it should be repaid, and it should be no problem on that because, I mean, the crime has been committed. He did not sell any land to them. Mm-hmm. If you look at the land deed and let you know who owned the land. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody bought land. no land from Daddy. Daddy right. ain't sold much land to nobody because that's what the fight was all about because Daddy wouldn't sell his land. Exactly. So, I mean, it's a great, I mean, all the land that he owned that people sitting there, they, 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 they properties own is a crime scene. Yeah, it's a, it is. It is a crime scene. And nobody's doing, doing nothing about it. They just letting it, they just still just letting it go, just letting it go. That, that ain't that ain't right. That ain't right. Something should be done about this here. It's time to stop that bull crap and, and all the things that that's been happening back then years ago that them white folks have done to them black. It need to come out. I mean, I feel it is gonna come out because this is like this is like I, I'm surprised. I, I, you know, just it does. It, you know, fact is always stranger and vicious than, than fiction can ever be. Uh-huh. And I'm sure there's some more cases like your father and. Some part deep recesses of the South and around this country, even that uh, folks are still afraid to speak about. Oh yeah, them. oh yeah. Because see, one of the guys that we was talking about uh, that went to, uh, up to see Sarah Castle, mm-hmm. what's her name up there, uh, with my daughter. His family, they killed five of his people. Oh wow! They had. Yeah, they killed five of his people. I don't know if they call them gamut or something like that, but they killed five of his people. Mm. Mm-hmm. And took what they had. Oh. So well, it, it's not just daddy, but it's just yeah. that they took more from my daddy. They're like, you know, you kill a civil rights activist versus you kill Dr. King or Malcolm X. It's like the same thing. It was a bigger target. <laughs> Your daddy was a bigger target. He, he he was symbolic of something that they feared the most, an independent black person. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We didn't need the white man's handouts. To he didn't need the white man's handouts. Right. That, that's a threat. He was an educated. I mean, he didn't, might not have went to... Uh, college, whatever. He was very educated and knew he was very family. educated. He was very and well. he was a threat. He was a threat to the people, to the white folks. Exactly. And they could not let him live down there. Exactly. See, I know I had a friend of mine. He told me that a lot of times in the South, that you had like a black person that, like I said, your father was a giant. 
Mm-hmm. They'll see the giants up north so they won't get lynched. So they won't get lynched. Right. A lot uh-huh. of black folks can stay down south. They had to send them up north. They had to send them someplace else. Right. I thought you it was, know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. I think about it. Uh huh. They, they they couldn't they couldn't let them stay down there. Mm. You know they they definitely had to send them to another place and it had really you know what it had to be north too because uh, that's the only place that where they was called it there free. Mm-hmm. And was the north. Uh huh. No, I'm so glad I talked with you. Yeah, yeah, it's an honor to talk to you and to keep up the fight. You know, keep moving on, but keep it up and don't give up. I'm not gonna stop. I know when the uh, when I was at that first ceremony when I got the flag from the uh, from mm-hmm. the army and they the one the minister said to them, Mrs. Mrs. Banks, they they still call me Mrs. Banks. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see you here. Uh, don't never think that we dislike what you're doing. He said, I want you to keep this up and don't you stop. Right. And that's what we're doing. We're going to do. We're going to stop it. If it takes my last breath. I'm 62 now. I'm 63 this month. That's right. If it takes my last breath, I'm coming after whoever got my stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm coming. They got to get rid of me because I'm afraid no more. I'm not afraid no more. That's right. You know, because God, I'm, God, I'm in God's hand now. I ain't afraid no more. That's right. We thank you, Mrs. Williams, man. And, and definitely keep up the fight. And we look forward to keeping people updated and okay. helping us where we can. Well, can I keep your number? Yes, ma'am. Anytime. Okay. Well, I thank you for calling. And uh, please keep on doing what you're doing also to help us promote this. Yes, ma'am. No problem. I'll do what I can. Like, you know, we all tools of God. If we chose to be used. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And I said, like I said, nice talking to you, okay? You too, ma'am. All right. Bye-bye. All right.